I'll start like Rafael just before me saying that I'm not going to talk about firewalls uh, for the same reason he said, namely I have my own idea and I think it's correct, uh, maybe it's not. Um, and so uh, I'm pretty sure about it and of course it's exactly the opposite of the one that Rafael says. I think there are no firewalls. And as he said, if you're interested, come talk to me. Uh, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, uh, um, I'm, I'm doing two things in this uh, uh, 20 minutes. One is uh, pretty simple and self-contained and it will take 15 minutes and then I'll throw some ideas at the end connecting with a larger picture and with quantum gravity. The first thing I'm going to tell you is about the role that uh, information play um, when gravity and quantum are, are, are play a role uh, in uh, uh, the foundation of thermodynamics. And um, I'll say something that perhaps to some of you are trivial but uh, perhaps uh, they're not very much known. And uh, uh, I'll say that there is a problem in the foundation of thermodynamics, I'll give you a solution. That would be the self-contained part. So let me start by something uh, pretty simple and completely non-controversial. Uh, this is what we uh, teach to our students. This is the three principles of thermodynamics, right? That's just the title, entropy grows, energy is constant, and then there's a zero principle of thermodynamics, which is in books, which says that temperature is constant at equilibrium. That's what I'm talking about. So if you have a gas in a cylinder uh, here with the gravitational field of the uh, Earth, we teach our students that if you take a thermometer, uh, you measure temperature, you take the same thermometer, you put it up, you measure temperature, T1 equal T2. It's a fact of the universe that T1 is equal to T2, provided that you have waited enough time, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So this is T1 equal T2. Now, as uh, many relativists here know well, this is false. But not everybody knows this well. Why is it false? Uh, well, because uh, this is only true in the non-relativistic limit. Uh, there is a small relativistic correction to that. Uh, if you uh, measure the temperature T1 and T2, they're actually different. Uh, lower is uh, more hot, is warmer by a factor which is given by the local gravitational constant, the one measured by uh, Galileo Galilei, right? 9.8 meters second per second, times the difference of uh, altitude from here to here, meters divided by the square uh, of the speed of light. So the effect is very small. Here on Earth, we're talking about delta T over T 10 to the minus 18 uh, centimeters to the minus one. It's rather uncontroversial, it has, uh, I would say it's completely uncontroversial, it has been derived in a variety of ways uh, by, there are at least 20 papers on the literature since the 30s, the first derivation was in the 30s by Tolman and then independently by Ehrenfest. Um, nobody has ever uh, disputed that as far as I know. However, it has not been measured yet as far as I know. So there are few experimenters here and uh, I think uh, I don't know, is there any chance to measure something like that? Um, it's, I'm, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it would be wonderful to, uh, to have it measured. But I don't think there is any doubt that this is the case. Now, if you're a relativist here, there are many, uh, this is a weak field limit expression, you want a general covariant version of the Tolman law. Um, this is it. Uh, if there is an equilibrium, it means in space-time there is some time symmetry, something conserved, so there is a killing, uh, time like killing field, uh, this killing field, call it uh, C, that's the norm of the killing field, the Tolman law, you know, it's a uh, uh, general covariant glory, is that what is constant is not a temperature, but is a temperature multiplied by the norm of the uh, killing field that defines uh, equilibrium. So these are facts, there's nothing controversial. The point is that uh, what about, I mean, thermodynamics is supposed to be the most uncontroversial, general, sure thing we know about the world. So how can thermodynamics fail? What's going on here? Well, what's going on is simple to see if you think in terms of, uh, you know, what our understanding of uh, thermodynamics in terms of statistical mechanics. So here's the standard derivation of T1 equal T2 in say the microcanonical, the entropy at this given energy is a number of state, the temperature is a derivative. If you start by maximizing the entropy, it's one way of deriving it, uh, it's immediate to see that uh, you want to be on a maximum, so the, the, the two derivatives must be zero if you have two systems uh, 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 in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, contact, because if you take a small amount of energy, d d1 from one, and you put in the other one, you want to uh, not change the value of the total n. 
and this gives immediately T1 equal T2. The, the, the catch in gravity, in relativity, is that energy is tricky, right? Energy is not conserved, it's covariantly conserved, it's something else. So it's strictly speaking, it's not conserved. If you take a bit of energy from upstairs and you move it downstairs, it's it, it heavy, it's mass, so it falls. So what goes down is higher. If you take a photon, it's red shifted down, and so it has a higher frequency. It's, it's more. So the energy you take away from here is less than the energy you put inside, from, inside here. So this has to be warmer in order to get the balance correct, and that's where the uh, uh, Tolman law comes in. So nice, we're all happy, except that what's the foundation of statistical mechanics now? Uh, T1 equal T2 is dead. It's just not true. Something else should replace it. Is there, case by case, we can work out what happened, but is, what's the general principle behind? It's not T1 equal T2. Now, if, uh, if the king is dead, you make another king. If the pope is dead, you make another pope. Sometimes even if it's not dead. Uh, so what replaces the uh, first principle of thermodynamics? And that's what I'm gonna tell you in a couple of minutes. Before telling that to you, I wanna say why I think this is interesting, and the reason is, that this is what we usually present our problems in fundamental physics, there's quantum mechanics, we understand pretty well, there's general relativity, we understand pretty well. We don't, uh, not really good in understanding what happens in between, not yet. Uh, but it's a little bit more complicated because there's thermodynamics, but thermodynamics, I mean statistical mechanics, thermodynamics, everything goes with it. And uh, we certainly understand very well the foundations at least of uh, statistical quantum mechanics, there's no big, uh, um, and in my opinion, this is controversial obviously, we understand it, it's better than usually, far better than usually claimed understood the possible relation with quantum mechanics and general relativity. We have theories which are not yet uh, empirically cons confirmed, of course, so we're not sure about them, but there are theories. They may have holes, they may, you may not like it, but they're there, you can do some calculation, you can predict something which we cannot measure. The point is that we're totally in the dark about the completely uh, the foundation of thermodynamic and statistical general relativity, okay? Careful, not of the foundation of uh, statistical mechanics on curved space-time, that's pretty clear since Tolman book. But the foundation of the thermodynamics of gravity itself, the statistical property of gravity itself, what's hot just space-time? That's what we don't know. What's the thermal superposition of space-times? That's what we are very much in trouble. We don't know how to define uh, entropy, energy, and uh, temperature. Uh, even worse, what's inside here, which is sort of black hole entropy, sits here, of course, which I think the difficulty doesn't come from this side, it comes from this side. So, let me give you the solution of at least the first problem in this direction, which is uh, uh, writing a, first, a zero principle of thermodynamics that works in general. And you want to follow me in that? Suppose you have a little particle, so a wave packet, which moves in space, okay, so it's no relativistic. Level. So when it moves, it, since it's a wave packet, it's a certain size, uh, at t equals zero, uh, at small t, just move a little bit away from itself, so the probability of seeing it that hasn't moved uh, is still considerable. Then it moves away from, one se from itself, at some point it becomes orthogonal to itself. So if you compute the probability uh, the sort of probability of not moving, which is this one, it behaves like that. It goes to start at one, it goes to zero very rapidly. In a time scale, T zero, which at first you might depend very much on the problem, but in fact it doesn't very much. You can estimate that by taking the second derivative of this, the Taylor expansion here, and you find that, which is immediate calculation, that the, this time step, the time for this entangle is uh, uh, h bar divided by the energy uh, standard deviation, which after the calculation is pretty obvious that should, you should come out with something like that. There is an analogous way of getting the same result, which I like very much, which is incredibly pretty, is a small one-line calculation in the classical theory. In fact, in semi-classical theory. This is phase space. Uh, your, your, your wave packet is a, is a cell of uh, size h bar. You want to uh, compute how much time it, it takes to go to the next cell. Uh, so this is a Hamilton equation in the, the you know, symplectic language. Uh, you want to see how much, uh, what the velocity which gamma moves. You just do a one line thing, you plug it inside and uh, you have a stock theorem and you get immediately that this is d, so you get the same result. Uh, if you're familiar with calculation, you see it immediately. So 
the uh, time step is h bar divided by delta e. Now, in a thermal situation, let's go to a thermal case, delta e is kT, right? The mean value of the energy is equal to the variance of uh, to the standard deviation of the energy is kT. So this means that every degree of freedom, this is a beautiful result. Maybe it was known, maybe it's all over in the literature in different languages. I don't want to claim it is, is completely new, but I find it fantastic. In a, a situation of time t, at temperature big T, every degree of freedom moves from, away from itself, so one Planck cell in phase space, at a rate which is universal. It only depends on the temperature. Is given by this one. And uh, this, in fact, can be connected with thermal time, which is what uh, Raphael Busso called uh, is, is, is the one parameter family, is a one parameter generator of what he called the, how do you call it, the K, the, 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 the thermal Hamiltonian, the, 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 the modular Hamiltonian is the one, thank you, of the, of the Tomita theorem. Let me skip this. Is, uh, so this gives a physical meaning of temperature. I think I like, I loved when I realized that. Temperature in a uh, uh, Planck constant equal Boltzmann constant equal one units is measured in, in uh, seconds to the minus one. So temperature is one of the seconds. Why? So it, it's a rate of something. It's a rate of what? It's exactly the rate in which every degree of freedom, any degree of freedom of your system jumps away from itself. So at room temperature, um, 10 to the 12, it means that uh, every sort of molecule of air in our body, air, uh, moves away from its, uh, from its quantum state uh, 10 to the 12th time. So let's apply that to the first principle, to the zeroth principle of thermodynamics. This is a gas, this is upper part, this is lower part. We are in an equilibrium situation. This makes a number of steps, n1, during some history. This makes a number of steps, n2, it sort of screams to say, well, the right principle is that n1 is equal n2, right? And in fact, it works. So um, let me interpret n1 as the information that n2 can have, that the lower system can have about the upper system, because that's the number of states it sees, the number of states uh, information in the sense of Shannon, and vice versa. At equilibrium, the information going up and information going down should be equal because there's zero flow at equilibrium. That's what you, you want. So let me postulate that equilibrium is delta i. No flow information going up and down. And wonderful, in a non-relativistic case where well, t is just universal time, you get immediately the standard principle. In, on a curved space-time where there is a, 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 a killing field, you get immediately Tolman law. I don't, don't go through the derivation, it's immediate. What's going on physically? Upstairs in the gas, this is time, this is elevation. Upstairs, this, the, 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 the system jumps from state to state. Downstairs jumps to the same state at the same rate in the common time. But here clock go faster, uh, faster. Here clocks go slower, right? The GPS up there clock goes faster. So temperature is lower there because a the clock measure, because temperature is number of steps per second. And a second is sort of shorter there than here. So temperature is not uniform. Uh, time is different up there, but there is something which is what gives uniformity, which is the uh, flow of uh, the, 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 the information here and the information here should be equal. So that's the conclusion of my uh, sort of main part. The uh, zero principle is thermodynamic is death. So long life to the new zero principle. This is one possible version of the new zero principle. That's the one we uh, suggest. I mean, there may be others which the uh, uh, relative information the two systems about have one another, about one another, uh, is the same uh, at equilibrium. And I just uh, add here, temperature, just to your memory, is the rate at which a system moves from state to state. So let me come to the second part. This is what I think we have learned about the world. Uh, from Newton, particles, space-time, then we added field, we had realized that space-time has to be so pulled together, particle fields, particle just expression of quantum fields, and the key point is general relativity tell us that space-time is a field. So now, if we believe general relativity and we believe quantum mechanics, we don't have stuff on space-time, we have just general covariant quantum fields. So this is the world uh, for various uh, scientists uh, sitting here. The old good uh, uh, particle physicist have a view of the world, and, 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 and many uh, descendants of those people, uh, have a view of the world in, in which there is space-time and you have to do stuff over it. 
You have to do quantum field theory to compute that. Now, post Maldacena string theorists move a step away from that because they realize that the bulk can be more complicated than that, but they're pretty scared of sitting to the bulk. So they sit on the boundary, they assume that there is a negative cosmological constant, which of course doesn't exist. And so at least there, there is something, however, you can put your feet and do quantum field theory, so okay, you don't get scared. A genuine quantum gravity physicist accepts the challenge to live in a world where there is no space and no time, okay? So that's the genuine quantum gravitational physics. There is no space and no time. Can we do physics in that way? Yes, of course we can. And that's, I think, what quantum gravity demands us to do. Of course, if we are in that situation, we don't have time. So we cannot, we don't have temperature, we don't have energy. So we have to write the fundamental uh, thermodynamics. Oh, five minutes, have plenty of time. Um, so what, how do we do physics without space and time? I think that, uh, let me get, just give, give you a sketch about, uh, uh, about that and then get to the last transparency, much more precise, but uh, it wouldn't be understandable, I think, without this sketchy uh, step here. Quantum theory, these are the two sort of uh, informational postulates of quantum theory I, I, I uh, flashed during my first uh, presentation here uh, the first day. Um, can be understood in terms of information, information exchange between states. This is also true in quantum field theory. We only have to remember that there's initial state, final state, but there's also boundary things we have to consider. Thermodynamics, uh, as I just have argued, also uh, it's an issue about systems uh, and uh, interactions between them in which we only uh, consider macroscopic variables. Now, general relativity. What is general relativity telling us? General relativity is telling us that the world is not space-time with stuff over it. So localization is not somewhere in space-time, but localization is only relational of things with respect to things. Things, one of the things being the gravitational field, which however is a quantum field, okay? So this sort of uh, want to be connected and uh, the main discovery, if you want, of uh, 20th century physics, one of the great discoveries of 20th century physics is locality. What is locality? So locality is what Newton took away from. Locality is that interactions are local. Okay. So interaction can happen when there is adjacency. And if you want vice versa, what is adjacency else than being in the same, but being able to interact? So it's natural to be willing to identify systems with regions and processes with uh, 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 space-time region. Um, you may think this is trivial. This is not trivial. What I'm saying is that imagine you have a CERN experiment. This is a particle coming in, decaying in two particles. Okay? It happens in space-time region. If you want to measure it, you want particle detectors, which measure field, but you want also to know where this particle detector are and how much time has passed. But where is a measure of distance and how much time is a measure of proper time? These are just uh, functions of the gravitational field. So you're measuring fields here and fields here and no space and time beyond the uh, value of the field themselves. In a quantum theory, all these things are quantized. So what you want is uh, quantum states out of which you can read space, not space on which you want quantum uh, fields. Now this is my penultimate transparency. I just uh, uh, slashed the uh, all the fundamental equation of loop quantum gravity, uh, not because I want to go through that in details, but because I want to show that, uh, in fact, you can write a quantum theory for the gravitational field. There is nowhere here there is X and T. There is no space and no time. There are quantum states. Uh, is, this is this blue part here. There's a, a, a Hilbert space and an operator, more precisely a family of Hilbert space, uh, an algebra of operators. Uh, and each one of the states in this Hilbert space has a semi-classical, some of the states in this Hilbert space have a semi-classical approximation, which are space-time. So this is a quantum state of space, not quantum state in space, thank you. And then once you have a state on some boundary, some boundary region, you can compute a number, this number W, which is a function of the state, which is the amplitude for this process. And a process is a space-time region, is a transformation from one state to one state. So this is a well-defined set of equations. You can compute it. You can show that in some limit to give general relativity. You can argue that there is something wrong with them, of course. Uh, they might be wrong. They may be right. They may be incomplete. But this is a way of doing quantum uh, 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 theory, which has a classical limit with general relativity, which is consistent with quantum theory. And of course, it's very far away from 
local quantum field theory in the sense of fields on space-time. I think this is a, a possible quantum theory of gravity. Maybe wrong, but it's a possible quantum theory of uh, uh, gravity. And by the way, this is ultraviolet finite. This is what it, the, the entire, the, what, it, what it wants to be. So I end with this uh, slide I, I uh, put before. I think that uh, we have at least one, and probably more uh, possible tentative quantum theory of gravity. They are not so mysterious. You can compute with them. They're hard to compute. They may be wrong. So this part is understood. I still think that we are very much in trouble in understanding the thermodynamic statistical mechanics of space-time. That's why black holes seem so complicated. So in a sense, black holes are not helping us understanding gravity. They're pointing what we don't understand uh, yet. And I am happy to take questions. I'm sure the people who disagree with say will think they say. Thank you. Thank you.